Hey there, YouTubers! Woo! 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 This is the second time I've Naruto run today! Whew! I really could use some energy! Whoa! Energy! Almost as good as G-Fuel. Hi there, Dr. Sheep here. Welcome back to another energy video. Today is part two of two of my multi-part series on energy. Better yet, part 2.2. Unlike last time, I won't be explaining quantum mechanics in a field. I was supposed to do it on a swing set. That is too windy, as you can already hear. Then I was supposed to do it behind a rock wall at the other part. Well, that fell through because some little kids showed up. Now I'm here. I can't win today. But I will be in the lab this time. Now, we're going to focus on energy types that originate from this quantum mechanical realm. These types include heat, chemical energy, nuclear energy, chromodynamic energy, ionization, and finally, rest energy. So the first of these energies is thermal energy, or heat. We've discussed thermodynamics before. This is how thermal energy moves. Today we're going to focus on what it actually is. Temperature is the average kinetic energy of the particles in a system. There is potential energy in this realm too. This is latent heat. That's the amount of energy matter needs to change phases. This energy comes from the bonds between the particles in the system. These bonds need to be broken to change phases. Everything in the universe moves, from massive galaxies down to the smallest subatomic particle. If you can remove all of this movement and the quantum vacuum, which is impossible by the way, you would reach absolute zero. This is 0 Kelvin or minus 273.15 degrees Celsius. Even in the deepest parts of the universe, the atoms there in space are, in fact, moving. This movement is more important than you think. For example, you two, you need to remain at a specific average kinetic energy. If this energy slows down too much, so does your metabolic rates, and you die. If this energy speeds up too much, your metabolic rates are too fast, and you die. We are so fragile, yet the universe and its infinite knowledge seem impervious. The next type of energy is chemical energy. We humans are very aware of this type, as it powers our coal plants. Chemical energy arises from the intermolecular forces, which is the force between atoms and molecules. The electromagnetic, or EM force, is responsible for this energy, which comes from the potential energy in the chemical bonds holding the atoms and molecules together. If you want a great read on this extensive world, I would recommend Theodore Gray's two books, Molecules and Reactions. There are different types of bonds. Of course, however, they deserve their own video, and as of right now, 2020 is the year of chemistry on my channel, so be prepared. One example of an exothermic reaction is this alcohol when it reacts with oxygen. Alcohol needs to release vapors that mix with the oxygen in the air. When a small amount of energy is added to excite the molecules, the reaction happens. In this case, new bonds are being created, releasing heat. The new bonds are more stable than the original, thus heat is produced. Please put this out. Wow, that was, whew, that was more chemistry than I'm comfortable with. Let's get into some more physics. Next, we have, the nu we have nuclear energy, which arises from the intramolecular forces, or the force within the molecules and atoms themselves. The strong nuclear force is responsible for the nuclear energy of atoms, which is holding protons and neutrons together in the nucleus of an atom. The strong force is one of our four fundamental forces in the universe. Each of these forces, in theory, 
has a carrier particle to mediate that force. The strong force uses mesons, which is what holds the nucleons that make up the nucleus of an atom together. The two types of nucleons are commonly known as protons and neutrons. This force that holds them together makes up a part of the potential energy of an atom. However, the weak nuclear force also plays an important role in the interaction between nucleons because it is responsible for the atoms falling apart in a process called radioactive decay. Why, hello there. I have my fun fact book. I'm in my fun fact chair. That means it's time for a fun fact. <sighs> I finally got that chair. And time is relative. The fourth fundamental wave, uh, force, in theory, is gravity. And this is because of the wave particle duality. We've already detected gravitational waves, and we suspect there should be a force carrying particle for it because of wave particle duality. We call this particle, this theoretical particle, the graviton. We all know this, or we think we know this, because Einstein has shown that the universe can exist without gravity acting as a force in curved space-time. Isn't that just fascinating? Oh boy. Now let's go subatomic and explore the quantum mechanics that describes the mechanism of quantum particles to explain the existence of protons and neutrons. Phil never write a sentence ever. Protons and neutrons are made up of subatomic particles called quarks. Each proton neutron in the nucleus of an atom consists of three quarks. Keep in mind there are many different types of quarks yielding further explanation in another video that will probably never happen. But anyways, these three quarks are fundamental elementary particles. So as far as we know, there's nothing smaller. <laughs> Strings. <clears throat> The quarks are held together by gluons, which is another force particle mediated by the strong force. However, to be more technical, the mesons that I mentioned earlier are actually the residual particles from the leftover energy that is used to hold the quarks together. The original energy that was used to hold the three quarks together is called chromodynamic energy. Wow, that was a lot of high level stuff. So let's try to summarize. The strong force, the force holding quarks together, is referred to as the color force because they interact via the color interaction. Phil, these are regular people, they don't know what that is. I barely know what that is. Basically, quarks are bound together. These clumps of quarks are called hadrons, and the potential energy that they use is called chromodynamic energy, and there is some remaining energy called nuclear energy that is used so the strong nuclear force can hold the nucleons together. I'm an electron here. I'm an electron over here. Oh, now I'm an electron over here. Ah, but if you recall from your science classes, there's another part of the atom we haven't mentioned yet. The electron. So if nuclear energy holds the nucleus of an atom together, what attracts electrons? This is called ionization energy. Ooh. And the force that operates using this energy is electromagnetic energy. As I've mentioned before, the EM force participates in chemical energy holding atoms together. It also acts to hold electrons to the nucleus. Because if you remember from those science classes, when bonds are formed, electrons are shared or transferred between the atoms. Go communism! When a bond is formed, chemical and ionization energies are involved. Also, the EM force is another one of those four fundamental particles, uh, forces I should say, meaning it has a carrier particle, the photon, or more specifically the virtual photon in this case. I've talked about photons many times before on this channel, and we'll talk about EM energy and photons more in part 3. You see, the nucleus is positive, 
and the electron is negative with wave-like properties. Opposites attract, thus you have electrons around the nucleus that don't fall in. I put around in quotations because of the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, which we talked about in part 2.1 and virtual photons are exchanged to keep those electrons there. They are virtual because their existence cannot be detected. If they did exist, they would violate the conservation of energy, but they are necessary to transmit the EM force. Keep in mind that photons responsible for quanta of light are real photons. The last energy is rest energy. I need a chair. Rest energy plays a crucial role in explaining the mass of an atom. This is because over 99% of mass of the atom comes from the potential energy inside the nucleons of the atom. All mass behaves as energy, and all energy behaves with the properties of mass. This phenomenon is illustrated by the famous equation E equals mc squared. Now, I've talked about this equation before on my channel. Last time I mentioned gamma. Gamma isn't important in this situation, but it is necessary for relativistic cases to be true. E is energy, which is equal to the mass of a particle multiplied by C, the speed of light, squared. So what we can get from this is that energy is the same thing as mass, but mass is not the same thing as matter. Therefore, energy and matter are not the same thing. Instead, think of mass as a property of matter, and energy plays a role in those properties. So the binding energy holding quarks together and the protons and neutrons together makes up the majority of the mass of an atom. An interesting point is that light doesn't have mass, but because light has energy, it must behave as if it has mass. And the most counterintuitive part is that it does actually have momentum. Because it's always moving at the speed of light, its rest mass must be equal to zero. So what have we learned today? Well, to be fair, I'm not sure. First, we should never let fill number of series ever again, or write one for that matter. Second, we've learned everything is moving. Then we learned what holds molecules together. After that, how atoms are held together. And finally, what rest energy is. This concludes part 2.2 of my energy series. Now that the video, now the video on bonds will come out in 2020. It will be a chemistry specific video considering the content in it. But in the meantime, I would like to thank you all for watching. Please like, comment, and share new videos every other Friday, 2 p.m. Central Time, and good night. Subs for trees, subs for trees, subs for trees, subs for trees. Oh, you're still here? I thought I told you to go home. Oh, you want more? I'm flattered. Check out the playlist. If you want exclusive content, check out my Instagram, doctor underscore sheep underscore YouTube. That's all lowercase. If you want to help the earth, subscribe. When I reach 100 subscribers, I'm going to plant 10 trees. If you feel that's too small, then check out my channel tree where I lay out even bigger goals. Finally, stick around for the next 20 seconds to give me that sweet watch time. Bye.